Okay, hello people. This is uh, Luisa Quiroga from Universidad Sur Colombiana. I'm taking voice and we are encouraged uh, to do uh, a literary blog for the class. I have chosen by Nathaniel Hawthorne since I think it's explanatory itself uh, given the nature of the author. So here by well, I'm going to start now. So first of all, uh, given the story, um, Hawthorne uh, puts a W in the middle of his last name uh, because he wants he want he doesn't want to be directly associated uh, to his uncle who was one of the judges when the uh, asylum trial started in the previous uh, century of uh, like the witches trials so uh, taking that into account we can infer that uh, his family was a puritanist so uh, all of the people uh, from uh, Salem, Massachusetts are characterized uh, to be uh, democratic parties and uh, they are uh, Calvinists. So uh, I think that that has to do the way the story is uh, presented when he speaks and he explains about the birthmark itself. So uh, with that in mind and the literary movement at that time which was uh, romanticism uh, we encountered that uh, he belonged to the dark uh, romanticism movement uh, which is often characterized uh, because of the guilt sin judgment and punishment and we can check on that through the whole story and also uh, the historical background it's uh, like he like the main character being a scientist like at that time we came from a time that uh, was on the renaissance and also the revolutionary movements around and also the industrial movement just getting started so by that uh i think uh, and i feel that one of the reference for this uh could be uh like gave uh more notions uh, regarding their chemistry and these notions i think they are being used through the story because he starts uh describing itself how the crystallization starts on the potion that he wants to give to his wives so that's on one end so like he this person uh, belong to the Renaissance and he explains uh, for the first time how uh, crystallization and calcination and dissolution is done so he was already advanced to, uh, to his epoch so I think that it's one of the references that he uses in the insight afterwards of uh, like giving a deeper uh, understanding to what he states there we find uh, that is very judgmental uh, through the story uh, when he states literally this uh, he says that he's selecting it it the birthmark as a symbol of his wife's liability to sin sorrow and decay and death so Elmer's somber imagination was not long in rending the birthmark but a frightful object so he first objectifies his wife and also he take this birthmark the little hand of the lady as a symbol of what a human being is so therefore we see that he's judgmental afterward like we can see how he somehow he wants to punish his wives uh, when he directly asks the lady like he says explicitly the following thing he says has it ever occurred to you that the mark upon your cheek may be removed and afterward we says uh, we can check on how the wives feel enraged uh, because of what he says so we encounter also that she wonders why did she why did he take her as did he took her as his wife's when she didn't like this so also we say we can check uh one of the scenes and is that this 
author it's leading us to the part where as women also we were also objectified because she wonders that but she just thinks that it doesn't cause the envy of anybody and he literally says that on the writing so that's funny also uh we can check that he like even when one of the movements it's about like uh, glorifying nature also it's glorifying the man so he starts defying nature so uh like the the main character thinks that what will be my triumph when i shall have corrected what nature left imperfect in the first work so he's like already judging nature like it's not he's not accepting his emotions and he's definitely not a uh, glorifying nature like he does but it's still uh anthropocentric so there we go uh i think this story was truly good uh because the, the author uh lead us to uh what some of us uh, have felt before and uh, is the fact that we don't feel comfortable with certain things or our own and we see how the this a person gets punished by uh, losing his wife he rather lose his wife than let it her be and that allowing her to be and be happy in his family it shows us how sometimes we get drowned by our own feelings that way which that's the thing that i really enjoyed about the story it has made me reflect about myself and how I need uh, to like bypass and uh, like achieve certain things uh, regarding myself. Like when you have to forgive yourself for something you have done but you haven't been able to, that's what this is about for me. Uh, because believe me you don't want to be like self-centered and uh well you don't want to be like judging yourself at all all the time and uh well he rather loses himself so we shouldn't be doing that on ourselves so i think that even when this story it's like an old story it's not that new we need to accept nature we need to find the nature as it comes and also like some things are what make you you